Hi folks, Al at ANH here for another zone takeover of the Q&A sessions. I uh, hope you're all well. We're slowly recovering from ADE last week. And this week I wanted to talk to you and walk through uh, setup with the zone 96 and Tractor Pro 3. Um, it's relatively speaking a fairly straightforward setup, but there are a few gotchas perhaps and a few um, preferences you can choose or not. So we'll give you a quick run through of how to use uh, the control vinyl setup for DVS um, using DEX, external turntable, uh, and running through the mixer. Um, talk about as well if you've got time using tractors effects as a send and return system, uh, which is suitable to the 96 and other zone mixers. Um, and also some recording using Tractor as well. So those are questions we see commonly coming into our support interface and people chat to us about when we're out and about. Um, let me just run through for you the setup for DVS. So first thing you want to have obviously is Tractor Pro 3 installed and activated on your computer. Um, and then ensure that the zone 96 is connected uh, and if i take that out of the screen a second you can see that today i'm going in here on usb one and i have the midi uh connection for that usb one interface also enabled that's because i'm using a controller today but we'll talk about that another time um, Connect your turntables using DVS as you would do uh, normally for a record. So you connect to the phono inputs. That is assuming, of course, you're using 1210s or something like that, and they are an RIAA output. If you are using turntables that have a line output, you can connect those into the line RCAs on the channel. Um, but we would suggest you use the phono outputs if it's got it and use our phono preamps, which are, I think we would be confident in saying a, a, a better than most uh, turntables that have the RIAA internally. So uh, today, just so as you can see as well, uh, I'm using one deck just to demonstrate this. I've got it coming in on channel three of the mixer, physically connected. So the same as you can see on screen two and my screen two here, I've got that physically connected into phono on input three on the back. Now for DVS time code, I want to set the USB source select switch for that channel pressed in for PH phono so that the signal source going into tractor is what's coming off the record and in this case that's a time code platter um, to go back into tractor and open up the preferences you can see here my audio device is um, showing zone 96 USB 1. I'm using a Mac. It would show ASIO on a PC, but it's core audio compliant with the Mac. And as I've said before, I'm connected physically to USB 1 on the back of the mixer there. Uh, if I was connecting to USB 2, that would be shown in the audio device would come up as zone 96 USB 2. Uh, your sample rate settings and your buffer size for um, tractor is largely dependent on the processing capacity of your computer. 44.1 should be fine for most cases. That's CD quality audio in reality uh, and, and less technical terms. I kind of prefer to default to 48. It's probably because of our heritage here at A&H is a sort of old school standard uh, you can if your computer is up to it 
and not full of bloatware or loads of stuff going on in the background. Set the sample rate higher, up to 96K. You'll get slightly lower uh, latency uh, and you can lower the buffer size as well. But again, that's a preference for you. I would suggest if you're just starting out, leave it at 44.1, it should be fine. Hi folks, a few people in there already. Uh, if you can cover later how to create an echo uh, kind of effect with some sense returns. Yes, Jad, I'm going to uh, cover uh, the effects routing using tractors effects and the 96 send and return system shortly. Uh, so just let me finish running through the DVS setup um, and use the right trackpad. So in the output routing for tractor, and I'll go to this first rather than the input, make sure that you've got the mixing mode set to external. So uh, Tractor will default to this if you plug in a 96 um, and output of deck A in Tractor is going to channel two left and right USB. So that's three, four on the USB channels and that's channel two on the mixer. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, if I just show you here, that is this one. Uh, yep. Yeah. That is that one. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Deck A is coming in on channel two of the mixer. And Deck B is coming in on channel three of the mixer. OK. My input sources to the mix are USB one. OK. So it's coming the output of tractor into these two channels. Uh, if I go back onto uh, tractor, you can see here that this is set up for tractors kind of typical an hour, typical old school setup. Um, two media players on the outside, uh, C and D into channels one and four, two turntables on the inside, A and B. You can switch those around a little bit uh, so if you wanted to have A, B, C, D across one, two, three, four of the mixer, you can reassign these outputs for the USB channels accordingly. If you wanted to have your turntables on the outside and your media players on the inside, or you're using a mix of turntables and uh, direct deck outputs with a controller, such as I'm kind of doing here, uh, what I've actually got connected, uh, if I go back to the screen there it's just two channels for the example and this one is connected to that turntable and this one is just running an internal playback deck but you can see that a little bit clearer here so this is my turntable channel this one is my internal playback deck output from tractor and these two at the moment i'm not using um, so that's the output routing from tractor C A B D. The input routing, and this is where the DVS comes in, you can see here, is just at the moment set up for the two decks. Um, Three, four is channel two for deck A and input to deck B is five and six. That's channel three on the mixer. So if I just show you screen two now, uh, let me take that one out of the way a sec. Repeat that showing you the back of the mixer. So the physical inputs is my turntable is plugged in to channel two of the mixer, USB channels three, four, channel three of the mixer, USB channels five, six. And that would be my turntables on the inside, for example, and two media players on the outside. Phono press down on those channels for turntables. And then to give you back the tractor preferences view, hopefully then 
you can see what's going on there now you can't see at the moment any signal coming in to input deck b which is what i'm using for time code but that is purely because i don't actually have a needle on this record at the moment and i will show you that now if i drop it down so you can see that signal coming in there you go that's the platter giving a time code signal and you can see that coming in to the software at the moment it's not controlling the deck just want to walk you through the setup the other two signals you can see down here i have master left and right and then effect send but i'll go back to those shortly so just let me lift that back up again and the next thing i want to go to is my time code setup you got a choice between the internal playback or scratch control for these decks. So for the one that I have the turntables connected to, the ones I want to control with time code, set those to scratch control for the playback mode. As I say, on this one, it's deck B, which I'm controlling via time code. Uh, and if I drop the needle again, You'll see that signal come in there. You can also see it if you open the scope window within Tractor. And if you want to open that on the DEX layout, it's in the DEX layout panel. And you can see platter and scope here presented for each of the DEX. <clears throat> so for the others that I'm not using, uh, they're off. And for B, I've got the scope. You can have the platter if you wanted to do that sort of style. For the moment, I've got the scope so you can see the signal coming in. Um, <clears throat> you can turn that on and off locally on the main screen, just clicking that arrow there. So if you want it out of your way, once you're starting to mix, it's easily hideable. Uh, and then if it's the first time you're using it or something looks a little bit askew, um, you can calibrate that just to make sure the signal is going OK. You can see tractor in the bottom there. Just recalibrating it. It's already it's working OK for me today. And it's also telling me I'm using a seven inch. Which is what I have. Our 12 inches are still on the way back from ADE. Um, So once you've done the time code setup and the DEX layout, you can kind of close down the preferences, really. Uh, but before I do that, what I'll show you in the mixer is another useful setting for um, particularly the zone mixers um, in terms of how tractors preferences and our signal path um, work together in the mix i can see a few questions coming in let me just wander through this setup now and i'll get back to you guys across uh robbie um i can see the questions uh so in the mixer preferences for tractor Using a 96 or a PX5, if you've got one of those, um, any of our current interfaces, to be frank. External mixing mode preferences down here. Uh, set the headroom. You've got a bunch of choices there. Set the headroom to minus 9 dB and apply the headroom to the channel meters. What you will then have is a most accurate representation on the meters for the conversion between the digital signal levels in tractor and the analog metering and the analog signal that you're summing in the mix. Um, the other stuff in there that I've got enabled, some of those are preferences, uh, filter type, if you're gonna use that, why not set it to the zone? Although you've got two 
VCF analog filters on the mixer, so you could choose a different one if you wanted to. The EQ type, again, is a personal preference. Um, by all means, choose the zone. That will give you four bands. Personally, I quite like to have an isolator if I'm using internal uh, controls for EQ. But again, in the mix, generally speaking, it's the mixers, EQ and filters that I'd be working with. So those are largely subjective considerations in this kind of setup. Um, filter key um, and uh, the Q you're not really going to use because you're going to use the um, Q on the headphones. Uh, and the balance, and again, again, is local to the mixer itself. So those can be um, ignored or left at the defaults for tractor. Um, the main one is the minus 9 dB headroom setting so that what you see coming into the mixer from the software reflects the dynamic range of the mixer as well. Um, I'm just going to take that platter off because I've only got a 7 inch and it's running to the run out. Uh, and it's not doing anything at the minute in terms of the track which I've got looped because I don't have it set up to follow the vinyl there's a couple of ways I can do that is either switch to absolute mode on loading which is here or when it leads in on the uh, track so if I just switch that on take that off again And I start playing with the record, switch these in on here. And you can see now if I put my finger and stop that record, I'm now controlling the digital deck from a time code. Hopefully you can follow all of that. Any questions, fire them into the uh, chat and I will respond on that. Again, the basics and the, and the sort of step-by-step -step guide there is in the user guide as well. I think we might need to update it for Pro Free, but the steps that are outlined in the guide are, are fundamentally the same. Um, let's have a look at a few of your questions. Turn channel B doesn't push the right side of the stereo field anymore. When I cue it, it's fine in stereo in my headphones, but not through the main outs, booth, etc. Robbie, that's a support question. Uh, nobody's emailed you back from ANH using a 9.6. Uh, I'm not going to try and troubleshoot that with you on a QA session because there's possibly a few too many things to run through with you individually. But please. Just double check that you're emailing us for support at support at allen-heath.com and myself or Luke will get back to you. If you've already got a ticket open with us, Robbie, and you think we're not responding to you, um, jot your ticket number in the chat and I will pick it up after this session. Or if you've asked a question on the YouTube channel, which you're viewing this on, then again, just let me know where, where you've contacted us in the chat so I can pick that up following this session. Um, Akos, most tracks export only 41 hertz, 41K hertz, 16-bit. Worth it to choose 32-bit mode at 48. Would cause more converting and CP load in Tractor. Um depends on your source audio I guess you're saying um, I mean I tend to use WAVs if I'm using digital audio if I can unless in the example here I have got uh, beat ports stuff coming in um, but as I said at the start of the session uh, for most cases the default settings 44 1k uh, and 24 bit it, it, it's fine for that for most uses um can we also show how to change the tempo on tractor controller when using the 96 uh let me show you that now i think if i've got 
the jockey um, if I use tractor in DVS mode as you can see if I switch there now that's gone to the position on the platter where I am so let me just show you if I pick this up put that back in you can see there now that's found the lead in so that's now doing what the record does physically if I jump it around it'll jump about in the track hopefully you can see that alongside what I'm doing here on the record and on the screen as well so I've lifted the stylus off drop it onto the lead in calibrates quickly and then finds the track as you can see there um, I just jump that back into the loop if you want to use the pitch control on that then again be in vinyl mode if I start to turn that down on the deck we should see it going it's a little bit of latency on screen but I have just dropped the pitch to plus eight on the 1210 and if I sew it back down again I'll turn it all the way down to minus eight a little bit of latency on screen but that is happening as I move the control again another reason why you might not want to overstress your cpu if you're using the pitch fade and stuff like that um and and you do have a few settings in tractor as to quite how much that pitch physical pitch adjustment makes to the tempo of the track And Emiliano, thank you for adding that point. The next thing I want to just cover is, as somebody else had asked earlier in the chat, uh, let me go back and find out who that was. Let's see a few of you here. That's Jad. Uh, create an echo kind of effect with the send and returns. Going into Tractor's Preferences, I showed you earlier my input and output routing. What I've got here down at the bottom for the input effects send external is set to USB channels 9 and 10, which is send 1 left and right on the mixer. So if I show you the overhead of my mixer, these two inputs into tractor are coming from these controls here on the mixer send one controls okay the output routing for the same output effects return is down here on the output routing panel output effects return i've got that going out to 11 and 12 USB channels, which is the return B left and right on the mixer. So on the mixer, I've got it coming back in on this one. So the reason I've got that there is so that I can show you there's some signal level. Hopefully you can see that on my camera. Let me just give it a little tweak this way. Oh, that's gone astray a bit, excuse me. I'm coming in on return B here. Um, if I want to do it one to one and come input into tractor on nine and ten and output to the same nine and ten channels i can do that here and that will come in on return a on the mixer over this side and then for the input source for these channels you'd set that to usb one or two i'm coming in on one 
Uh, so that'll be USB one for my return. And then on the effects panels itself, if I close that down a minute. What you will see is, uh, bear with me, sorry. One other thing you want to check is the effects panel in the preferences. Set that from insert, which is a default on tractor, to send so that I'm routing in and out of tractor using my hardware. So then if I close this down now, what that's created for this effects engine is my physical sends and returns here sends returns if i turn that one up i'm going to leave that on the loop for a minute just so you can hear some audio with this that's the track on its own so no audio if i set this pre so you can hear the um effects coming back And that's tractor's effects doing that. If I show you, I've got a little mini control doing that. I'm going to set my tractor effects 100% wet because all I want is the output of that effects unit coming back to my return. And I can send from my channel input, which is the output of deck B, to tractor's effects. coming back in on return A. So I'm using the hardware send controls to send to tractors effects engine and then the interface to return the output of the effects engine back into the mixer. So that's proper what I guess we would call hybrid mixing using the software's audio uh, and effects to mix in the real world with the analog signal paths that you're going to be listening to. Um, I hope that makes sense and that you can follow that okay. Is it only possible to send and return one effect? Can't we use both send one and two for different effects? Jad, that's a limitation within Tractor at the moment, unfortunately. Um, if you have a look for the uh, output routing, there's only one um, let me just bring that back on my screen for you so you can see it in in tractors preferences they've only currently got one output an input effects return channel uh, you could use more of them I guess and sum them all to the same uh, input and output but again then you're getting into sort of different territory where you're definitely going to want a controller um to control the individual set so i could i could set all of these to be sends um and then they would all receive the signal from the mixer but you would only be able to use one of the usb channels because it, there's only one effect send and return there in tractor um maybe if you want more effects than than one the thing to do is to set the effect that you've got there to group effects. And then that way, if you can see there, you've now got three effects that you can access using that single send and return uh, system on the mixer. Uh, I hope that makes sense. And uh, you followed that okay. The other thing that I wanted to cover today as well in terms of the sort of setup with the 96 uh, or the zone mixers and tractor is external recording. Uh, so recording the mix output of your mixer um, back into tractor software. Uh, Jockey, I'm using the send return for recording in tractor. Okay, so ideal, look, this is, this is um, why I wanted to show you this example, because as I say here, 
um, for my inputs. I physically got two decks. I'm only using one, but a typical scenario, two turntables I've got set up. Um, I know there are possibly people using four turntables for DVS, but they're in a minority. And I think if you want to do recording in that scenario, you're going to need a different piece of software to use it rather than in tractor or sort of slightly different methods and stuff like that so this will work if you're using internal decks for playback through the mixer this will work if you're using uh, a couple of decks essentially it will work in this scenario if you've got one spare send or one spare input to tractor so as i say in this scenario I'm not using physical inputs on the mixer. Let me bring those back for you so you can have a quick look. In this typical scenario, I've got two turntables connected here. Uh, I'm not connecting CDJs in this setup. For example, it's more of a sort of digital setup. So just using tractors, internal playback modes, or maybe a couple of decks for DVS. Um, so these two are free channels, or if I've got CDJs, uh, media players connected here to the line inputs, um, but I'm not using that for time code, then this might be an option for you. Um, but sorry, my bad there. I want to be back and show you this for your recording what i want to do is use one of my spare inputs into tractor and i'm going to set 11 and 12 as my usb channel inputs and then on the mixer's top panel make sure that i'm using usb 11 and 12 here left up so that it's sending the master output to usb channels 11 and 12 to an input on one of the decks in tractor spare input deck d if i bring that audio back up there you go you'll see that there uh, it's pre-master levels on the output and physical output controls that's so that during the night or where I am, as I'm setting my ambient levels on the master, the signal that's going to the recorder isn't being affected. So I could start off with the with the ambient level to my speakers fairly low. As the night comes on, I want to turn that up. I'm going to use the master controls there. But the post fade main mix levels are still constant here in the mix. Uh, sorry, here in the mix recorder input. Then what I do using those signals as my uh, source, I go to the mix recorder and set this to external mode. My external input is any one of those. And as one of them said, they're already using the input effects. So if you wanna kind of use these setups that I've shown, um, then, uh, I think in most case scenarios, we're seeing there's enough capacity for, for people's typical setups to kind of try this out and, and still use tractors uh, recorder to, to capture your mixes. So like I say, I've got that set to input deck D. That's the signal coming in there. That's this one you can see on the meters uh, in the mix recorder. It's external, that's the source. And then if you have a look up here in the main screen, you can see that signal level there reflected in the recorder. So if I turn down physically uh, my faders, you can see straight away that mix level is gone from the recording input i'll bring that up it's not affected by 
any of the levels that are coming that you're listening to or that I'm sending to speakers and so forth. Okay, and then all you need to do then is uh, press record. <laughs> In this case, as you can see, it's flagged up a warning for me because I'm streaming that audio from Beatport into Tractor. It doesn't want me to do that. Uh, DRM and such like, it's a fair call. There are some other ways that you could get around that. Um, but if you're using your local audio and or uh, external sources um, and you're not streaming, then you would be able to set the mix recorder on there. But you can see the signal path is in there. I hope that will kind of make sense for you. Um, For any internal recorded by tractor, you need to put the gain in tractor audio recorded to plus 2 dB. Maybe. Uh, I'm not so sure about that. You don't want to clip it out. Um, this is, don't forget, dBFS. So if you hit in the clip there, you're going to have a square wave signal in your recording. So we would sort of typically allow a bit of headroom and stuff like that. Say so that's reflecting there on the meters in tractor where I've got, I think, on the meters on the mixer. If I turned that flat up, I would probably have to drive this really hard to get it back into that level. You see there, if you're watching the tractor meters there, I've turned that right up. It's peaking on the meters here. It's clipping the recording. So we like to keep a little bit of headroom so that I can add some filters and the effects returns and stuff like that. Once that's summed in the mix, that will push that level up. Um, okay, Jockey, I'll take your word for that. Yeah, you can put the limiter on, of course. Um, again, a lot of these are, 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 are sort of subjective to the particular tunes you're making or uh, mixing, sorry, uh, or, or or the way that you want to capture your recording. So there's, there's not hard and fast rules, these. Um, but hopefully that info helps. If anybody's got any particular questions, um, let's have a look, see what we got here. Run back through a few others. TB UK, is there no way to combine master? So B his master two is set up host music USB A to a Mac PC setup scene. Uh, without having to use another. Let me just reread that again. Is there no way to combine master? So B, here's master two in a setup. Uh, you're talking USB here. Um, master one and master two levels are physical outputs. So if you wanted to there is another way perhaps i can show you if you're already kind of using um 11 12 for a send output on the usb channels there's a little work around you can use to take a physical output let me show you here on this screen that might enable you to do something like that. And I think I'm understanding kind of what you're asking okay in terms of master one or master two. In this example, I've shown you that, so I would have a spare line input here, nothing connected to this line input. It could be any of the others that I don't want to use for, for time code sources. And I connect from the record out on RCA to a line in here. Um, I guess you could use master two but the, to be honest, they're the same signal path. They're tapped at the same place. The only difference that you have between the record out and master two in terms of where you're sourcing the signal is that you have a uh, level control for master two up here. Um, and again, for the purposes of recording, having that physical control maybe is not such an advantage because it's likely to, to get um, changed and, and kind of for recording you want you want a set level uh so this would be the one we suggest you can also use the audio sync out as a stereo output tap in the same post fader pre master level mix signal and then connect that into a spare line input have the usb channel source 
selected up so it's taking the line signal and in this example it would be usb channels seven and eight so that will appear on usb one and usb two so if you have usb one running for example uh tractor uh or or, or other sources uh outputs for that um and you've got a different computer that you want to record on. Let me just close that down. So say in 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 uh, your scenario, TB UK, a couple of decks from Tractor running into a couple of channels, uh, a couple of decks from something else or somebody else's computer. If it's digital sources to the mix, that's fine. Maybe my setup then would be A and B from USB one and A and B from a session on on usb2 that's fine internal deck modes um <clears throat> if you both wanted to use dvs you could potentially hook that up as well if you're prepared to share the same platters or use three um you've still got your spare usb input um which is either as i've shown you previously using 11 and 12 into your mix recorder or the hardware jumper here so again i hope that kind of makes sense uh i think so cool thank you for the uh feedback i'm assuming the you're a star means that you followed that and that all kind of made sense uh 96 interface good enough to have not have latency when linking tractor and ableton it's not the interface that's the limitation there uh, Emiliano, it's going to be the CPU on your computer. Yeah, we absolutely would run Tractor and Ableton together. I think I've done some sessions in the past, and I'm happy to sort of revisit that again in the future, is that I would run typically Tractor uh, as my source for, for DEX and Ableton as a source for software effects. And I happily run those on the same computer uh, with the uh, latency settings on those and some remote control so that would all work in real time um again depending on how dynamic you want to be with that sort of a mix uh it, it might be how you set the um sample rate and, and your buffer size uh but it, that really is a function of your computer's uh cpu so there's no limitations in terms of using the 96 on doing that absolutely you can do as robbie says it's your cpu um and another reason why to be fair there's no there's no particular reason in these sorts of scenarios where setting 44.1k as your sample rate um will will not be a problem for you uh, if you've got a really high-end spec computer plenty of ram on it and it's a stripped down system dedicated to audio uh by all means you know ramp up the sample rate a little bit cut the buffer size right down if you're using kind of m1 processors now as well if you're using the kind of modern computers they're very very capable for that sort of thing so we'd love to see the ableton tractor set up uh i have to sync ableton's effects on an older, older ableton jad oh oh we did i did do one of those quite early on in these zone takeover sessions um but i will certainly look to revisit that i think next time um tb uk do something in future reference to 96 and k2 send return i'm gonna look at k2 next time so next month i'll be back again uh we're into ooh, november uh be the last week in november i'll be back here i am going to look at uh k2 and some mapping options for tractor um we'll touch on live but there's probably two sessions to focus on it uh and how you can integrate the k2 as a midi controller using x link with the 96 the same principles here that i've shown on 96 today are also uh usable on pix5 so the same routing principles apply the naming on the channels essentially again is uh in short the first channel will be one two three four five six seven eight on the px5 you've only got one send so that's nine ten um if you're using a 
23C or 43C. You can have 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 for the 23C and the same 1 to 8. So I hope that makes sense. I know some people it's a little bit confusing and talking about it, it makes it seem more confusing than it is. But hopefully the kind of screenshots that we're showing you will enable you to kind of play back through it. You can pause it. We'll try and uh, bullet point some of these as well in some posts, some short form how to's visual step by step so you can follow. OK, um, next week, I think um, Keith is going to be back talking about some SQ stuff. If you've got any questions on what you've seen or what I've said here today, please fire them into the comments uh, on the channels that we're sharing this session on. We will look at them. Uh, we will try and respond to you. And if you've got other questions about different ways of using our mixers, things you're scratching your head about, uh, some particular setup that you want to see, pop those into the uh, questions and comments as well. And we will use that to ponder over and decide what our future sessions are going to be. As I say, we're running this once a month at the moment, last Thursday of the month, 3 p.m. UK time. So I hope this has been helpful for you guys and uh, see you next month.